Father, we do ask that you may, by your spirit, open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, our minds to understand, and our lives to live. Amen. Please uh, be seated. Well, today we begin a four-week series on what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? To answer this, we first need to understand what is a disciple? What is it a disciple to begin with before we can even begin to answer the rest of the question? The word disciple is used a lot in the Bible, especially in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. It's also referred to a lot in Christian gatherings, different Christian organisations, books, songs, and of course, sermons. But what does it actually mean? It's not a word that is commonly used in our society today. And it's probably pretty certain that most of us would know at least one person who may not even have heard of the word. Others may have some vague idea, oh, didn't that guy, Jesus, have 12 disciples or something? Um, then how would you define a disciple? Even amongst us, there may be different understandings if we were to actually do a brainstorm right now. Some may still only think of the 12 that Jesus called. And yet the Gospels and the Book of Acts refer to a greater number of disciples than just the 12. You know, such as the women who stood at the foot of the cross. Or in the first chapter of Acts, the 120 who were gathered together in a room after Jesus' ascension. And then again, I could give many more other examples. Other people may think it refers to particular Christians who are very involved in church or who are missionaries, like Bethany, who spoke with us yes, last week, sharing her experiences in Cambodia. It's as if there are Christians, and then there are disciples. But to be a Christian is to be a disciple. There are not two categories of Christians, only one. A Christian is a disciple. But also, others may think, that a disciple refers to anyone who goes to church or whoever is a church member. Each of those ideas is a misconception of what a disciple is. Now, the term disciple was very common in Jesus' day. The word literally translated means learner. It referred to a student, or I actually prefer the word apprentice because it involved a whole of life, not just an academic learning. A student or apprentice who would attach themselves to a rabbi or teacher to learn from them and follow them. And so there were all these rabbis or teachers around with all their various groups of disciples. However, when we come to Jesus and his disciples, there are a number of differences. You know, rather than the disciples choosing their teacher from the selection available, as was the norm, Jesus was the one who chose and called disciples to himself. Jesus isn't just one of the many to follow. He is the one to follow and calls people to come and follow him. As we hear in our gospel reading from Mark 1 in verses 14 to 16, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Jesus is the one who brings in God's kingdom. And so he calls people to come to follow him and embrace that good news through repentance and faith. That brings us to the first key characteristic of a disciple of Jesus. A disciple is someone who has been transformed by Christ through repentance and faith. 
A disciple is not just someone who attends church or volunteers at church or signs up as a member of a church, like a member of any other organisation. Discipleship is so much deeper, more deeper and more profound than membership. A disciple is someone who has been transformed by Christ through repentance and faith. And it is a radical transformation. Now listen to how this transformation is described in the Bible. In Colossians 1, verses 13 to 14, the Apostle Paul writes, For he, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Similarly, in Ephesians 5, 8 and 9, he writes, For you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. A disciple is someone who has been taken from the darkness of life in this world without God to the light of the kingdom of Christ through the forgiveness of sins that is only possible in Christ. It's a radical transformation. Another metaphor that Paul uses to describe this transformation is recorded in Ephesians 2. You were dead in your transgressions and sins, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Through the love and mercy of God in Christ, we have been taken from being dead in sin to being alive in Christ and raised with him in union with him to eternal life in his kingdom, which has started here and now in that relationship. A disciple is someone who has been transformed from death to life by Christ. One more example of this transformation is in the first reading we had from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 to 21. In light of Christ's death and resurrection for us, Paul writes from verse 16, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Christ's death makes possible our reconciliation with God. As we repent of our life without Christ, we leave behind all that belong to that godless life and turn to be spiritually born anew as a new creation in him, reconciled to God in a loving and intimate relationship. What we could not do for ourselves has been done by Christ. A disciple is a new creation, having left behind the old life to follow Christ. We see that dramatic turnaround in our Gospel reading. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. A disciple is transformed by Christ as they respond to his call to turn and to follow him before all else. This is far more profound than any membership, even membership in a church. 
Now, when I was an assistant minister in the parish of Warunga in Sydney, quite some time ago now, I remember the day when a man in his 80s became a disciple of Jesus. He'd been going to church for decades. I can still imagine see him sitting, he used to sit up the back on that side every single week as he had been, as I said, doing for decades. He was a member of the church. He was involved in church activities, volunteering in different capacities. And if you asked him, he would have said he was a Christian. One Sunday, while he was listening to the sermon in church, as he had done for decades, he suddenly got it. He got what it meant to be a disciple and therefore a Christian. It involved being transformed from death to life, from darkness to light, as he repented from living his comfortable and good life to actually putting Christ first in his life, being made a new creation, in how, and that changed how he perceived everything. It was wonderful seeing this 80-year-old man get up the following week in church and tell everyone what had happened as the light bulb had gone on. He finally understood what it meant to be transformed into a follower of Jesus Christ. Now that transformation is the first step. As the word disciple infers, a disciple is also a lifelong learner of Christ. In Matthew 11, 28 to 29, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. At Christ's transfiguration on the mountain with Peter, James and John in Matthew 17, a voice from heaven declared, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen, with the emphasis on paying attention in order to understand and respond. As disciples, Peter, James, John and the, John and the others were learners of Christ in the sense of being apprentices. They listened as students learning from Christ and they watched how he lived, participating with him in everything that he did. They were not just students of facts, but of the truths that Jesus taught and of his whole way of life. Being a disciple involves responding to and obeying all of Christ's teachings in word and action. As Jesus says in his parting words at the end of Matthew's Gospel, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. A disciple is someone who has been transformed by Christ, symbolised by baptism in that passage, and also who is an ongoing learner of Christ as they learn and listen to all of his teachings in the Bible, constantly growing in their understanding of him and in their obedience to him in how they live their lives, imitating him in all things. Now, thirdly, a disciple is a servant of Christ. And service involves sacrifice. In Mark 10, verses 43 and 45, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus, for Jesus, being a servant meant being prepared to die for the sake of others. 
This is picked up also in Luke 9, 23, where Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. The cross, a symbol of sacrificial living. He expands on it further a little bit later in Luke's Gospel in chapter 14, 25 to 27. Large crowds were travelling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. A disciple sacrifices all else to follow and serve Christ first and foremost, with everything else then falling into a proper Christ-centred perspective. Now this begs the question for us here in Australia, here in Melbourne, here in Mooney Ponds, how comfortable are we as disciples? I think it's very easy to be very comfortable. How open are we really to the cost of putting Christ first before all else? How hard can it be sometimes to give up just one and a half hours a week to come to church where we are able to learn more of Christ? It can be hard. There's always seem to be other priorities that can come and challenge us. I think, well, we can always go to church or to Bible study another time. Well, no, I've got too many other things. There's so so many other priorities on. And yet, what sacrifice are we making to be disciples of Christ? I recently heard another preacher, the advantage of things being online, I, I can actually go and listen to other preachers and to learn from them as well. And I recently heard another preacher define church as a transformative learning community. I thought that sounded pretty good. It's a place where disciples are transformed and continually being transformed as we learn of Christ and follow him. Now, the most important question I can ask anyone is, are you a disciple of Christ? Have you been transformed by Christ? If not, there's an opportunity to repent, that is to say sorry for not living Christ's way and then turning to follow Christ as Lord of heaven and earth. Next, once we've taken that step, the next question is, are you learning from Christ or have you become stagnant in Christ? Are you sacrificially serving Christ or comfortably living in the world. Today is an opportunity to come afresh before the one who died that you might be transformed from death to life, brought from a world of darkness into the light of God's kingdom forever, being made a new creation with all the hope and wonder and new life that that entails. Today is an opportunity to move forward as a learner of Christ, committing to prayerfully reading God's word, actively listening to sermons, engaging in discussions around God's word and obeying all that he declares. Today is a day to rededicate ourselves sacrificially serving Christ, the one who has authority in heaven and earth for eternity. In the words of the Apostle Paul from the end of 2 Corinthians 5 and the beginning of chapter 6. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled with God. God who made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. I tell you, Now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. 
Well, let us respond to that call in the words of our next song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's stand. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, though none go Yeah.